What's up, plebs? This is another Bitcoin breadcrumbs with myself, Corey Tusik, and Luke Mikic. Um, before we get into, we're going to get into a couple different bullet points about, uh, you know, the petrodollar. Hey, that uh, kind of fell off the face of the earth and that's gone. Um, and, uh, you know, Saudis pricing oil in euros and all that kind of fun stuff. And then what in the world is this stable quan thing going on that apparently is a tether rewrite? I don't know. Um, so anyways, before we get into that, I'd like to mention our sponsors, Coinbeast. Let me, oh, I lost it. There we go. Need, the, I'm so bad. Like, I'm a terrible person to sponsor, but like, I don't know, maybe it works for the sponsors that I like flub stuff and I just go with it. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, Coinbeast. I hope you like this. Um, <laughs> need Bitcoin support? Book a one-on-one video call with a pro on Coinbeast Connect. Ask questions about mining, self-custody, multi-sig, how to run a full node, how to set up the Lightning Network, and how to accept Bitcoin payments. Simply go to Coinbeast.com, select a pro, and find a time when you're available. It's that simple. Learning about Bitcoin has never been easier. And then it's also brought to you by Bitcoin Day. Go to Bitcoin Day dot io uh the next bitcoin day is in sioux falls south dakota on may 21st 2022 so if you want to get a discount on the tickets use promo code bms so that's bms for bitcoin made simple you'll get a discount on your tickets and then also last but not least uh would be the company that i own called movies plus uh, check out Movies Plus. We have multiple Bitcoin docs. Um, actually, I keep coming up with original ideas, Luke, that are um, that are specifically focused on Bitcoin. I'm trying to come up with original ideas that would be like not Bitcoin related, but you know, because I need to serve like all audiences. But um, but yeah, I had a couple ideas, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, it's just going to be a lot of Bitcoin content that keeps pouring in there over the years. So go to mymoviesplus.com, and you can sign up for a free 30-day trial. Don't need a promo code or anything like that. Just sign up, check it out. There's a three Bitcoin docs on there now. But uh, you know, if you're listening to this in the future, it might even be more. So uh, yeah, check it out, and let's get into the news. So, Luke, take it away. Okay. Um, I think it's probably one of the biggest news weeks that we're probably ever going to cover on our weekly Bitcoin breadcrumbs events. Like the petrodollar system continues to crumble. Um, I think we probably start with probably the biggest news of uh, Vladimir Putin saying a uh, big middle finger to the European Union and the West. Um, if you guys want oil, you're going to have to come to Russia and don't bother bringing in your stinky euros or your stinky US dollars. We only want gold, Russian rubles and Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> Corey, what did, you, what did you think of that? I thought it was massive. I almost fell off. Uh, I almost fell off. The tra- <laughs> I was going to say my treadmill whenever I saw that. Um, but uh, I just, I just watched the movie Step Brothers again for like the thousandth time. Um, and so I, I want to say I almost I laughed so hard I almost fell off my dinosaur. Um, <laughs> I remember that line, but uh, but seriously, great movie, great quote. Oh, it's such a good movie. Um, and uh, yeah, I just there's these things that have been happening that I'm just like I can't believe. Like these are things I didn't think would happen for a decade, you know. Um, and it's one thing for russia to be accepting other currencies um it's one thing to see the petrodollar going down but then to actually be accepting bitcoin for Mm. payments um i don't know it's it's hard to not be incredibly bullish on bitcoin whenever you're thinking about how um the game theory is playing out here and you know for everybody that's like you know pie in the sky these governments are going to adopt it. And then we're going to go to a unicorn filled world with rainbows shooting out of everybody's butt cheeks and everything's going to be wonderful. And we're going to have every, you know, communist or dictatorship or democracy. Everyone's going to take Bitcoin and accept it. And we'll move to a fair system. Not going to happen. Um, But they are, they, I think somebody was saying, I forget who said this, but it was kind of like, like mob families like if they all start moving 
to one thing like that's what like basically the different governments are they're like different mafias different mobs and they don't completely know what the other one's doing you know so it's not necessarily the u.s is going to adopt bitcoin because they think that it's great for them but they're like you know what like russia might be adopting it so like we've we've got to get in on it on some level i still though think that they're all going to try and control the living crap out of it they're not going to be able to but um you know just the caveat to throw that out there to the plebs and um our fellow plebs to be you know weary of anybody that that is gonna try and you know put some shiny thing out there uh, kind of like how el salvador not to sidebar but how they just declared martial law um you know so everybody was everybody was simping for bukele and then all of a sudden they declare martial law and i'm like Ugh, like thank god i think i tweeted and said thank god i didn't impulse move to el salvador um but anyways yeah so i think it's, it's just, just a game, game theory playing out and i think it's just inevitable that this is the direction it goes there's, there's a lot to unpack there that you said was really, really relevant. But, uh, firstly, the El Salvador issue, I, I saw like unconfirmed rumors that El Salvador saw one of its higher, highest like days of homicides or murders, I mm-hmm. suppose. Something mm-hmm. like what, 50 or 60 people died over the weekend. Uh, I'm just pulling figures off the top of my head that I saw scrolling through Twitter. So obviously don't, don't, don't uh, trust everything I'm saying, guys, but. Um, I think that was the reason why martial law oh, was yeah. implemented. Yeah, I, yeah. I've also no, been I... seeing some. What's that? I um, uh, um, for anyone listening to me, and I've, I'm on, I'm on operating on the uh, hotel Wi-Fi, so Corey and I have got a little bit of a lag. So <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> if we talk over each other the whole episode, but we'll, I'm sure we would deal with it. I was just going to say, um, I, I. I saw some interesting rumors, unconfirmed rumors on Twitter that obviously the US uh, might. Um, and it would make sense because Larry Parliament trying to curve the El Salvador adoption of, of Bitcoin. So uh, watch this space. Everything's still new. I don't have a really strong opinion on the El Salvador issue, but it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, so what do you think uh, about Russia, you know, accepting Bitcoin? Did they specifically say we're going to accept a Bitcoin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the finance ministers was in an interview and I think the exact words was something along the lines of if somebody wants to pay us in Bitcoin, we'll accept Bitcoin too. Um, so I believe that was the rough quote. Um, and I, I think it's I think it's completely... Uh, I think Russia accepting Bitcoin is completely on trend. It's um, it's what I expect to see over the next 10 years. Um, I think um, 2020 was an inflection point in Bitcoin's adoption uh, for me personally. I think uh, since 2020 happened, I, I think it all happens this decade. Um, I think when, you, when you've got the central banks doing what they did, um, I think it made it abundantly clear that the current financial system is... Uh, close to faltering and breaking down uh, when you've got central banks printing tens of trillions of dollars. And then you also couple that with another very key event in 2020 of Michael Saylor becoming the first publicly listed uh, company and CEO to just dunk a casual, what was it, $425 million in a Bitcoin. I, th- I thought those two events combined with, oh, God, Paul Tudor Jones in April 2020 calling Bitcoin the fastest force in the inflation race. All those things for me said, okay, Bitcoin, the four-year cycle is dead. Um, all these models are going to be broken. Bitcoin is going to get adopted a lot quicker than a lot of people think it is. So Russia adopting Bitcoin um, and saying they're adopting it in 2022 doesn't necessarily surprise me. I think it's surprising a lot of other people, though, because uh, a lot of people uh, kind of think, you know, oh, it's Central banks and these big governments won't accept Bitcoin until 2030 or 2035 or 2050. But you know, fiat's going to be around for 50 years. Um, I, I just don't think it. I don't think it will. And I think what Russia's doing uh, will continue the game theory um, of what I think is nation states quietly buying Bitcoin. I think they've been doing it for the past six to twelve months. Yeah. Um, 
And I mean, like, all I could think about, one of the things I thought about whenever I saw, like, Russia saying, okay, we're accepting payments for Bitcoin, is that if Satoshi, if he or she or they, the entire group, is still out there, um, they might have done, like, a quick double check on their OPSEC, on their operational security and, you know, retrace through all their steps just to make sure that nobody can trace it to them. Um, Because like, holy crap, you know, like Bitcoin, this idea, this white paper that in 2008 um, was just this, you know, vision in this plan and this dream to, to take us from a centralized currency system to a fair and open system and having nation states like russia during war massive saying massive that they're gonna take it like i mean i swear like if i if it was say if, if, if satoshi was how finney not just saying that's who it is but if it was how finney and like you know obviously rest his soul um his wife if she knows that it was him like i'd be like um, I'm going to go back and make sure that my late husband made sure this cannot get tied back to us because holy freaking crap like this, like <laughs> this is changing. Like if they could get this, Satoshi, they'd probably do anything they could to get this Satoshi. Um, not that even if they got the Satoshi, it wouldn't do anything, it wouldn't change Bitcoin. Um, but, uh, you know, they'd, they'd, they're probably looking for every possible angle to to tear this down because uh, the game theory, I think, has been there from the beginning. And I think I'd like to think there's parts of the U.S. that understood that. Um, mm. Because, you know, for anyone that, you know, is listening and has listened to the the Gladstein articles talking about, um, you know, the petrodollar, like we've had, it was a useful tool. The petrodollar was a very useful tool for the United States during the Cold War um, because we were forcing russia to exchange their currency into u.s dollars strengthening the u.s dollar in order to um to buy oil and from saudi arabia um so it's very useful um for you know what was a just and good cause uh i guess um and but it's it's falling apart and uh and it's happening rapidly so if the u.s didn't see that that was a possibility because russia who you know i mean obviously putin's a terrible person and you know doing horrible things but um you know he's a he's a tactician like he's he's tactically thought this all out well in advance Mm. and i would be shocked if it was not part of um his plan um you know at least there is at least a tab on his plan for you know bitcoin and and how it would affect it um my fear for the united states is that we're so stupid and so focused on fighting each other over you know stupid social rights whenever in reality if you're just being like a you know true freedom maximalist you just let everybody live their own life and live it how they choose and um you know so then all of a sudden the social you know aspect you goes away that's a perfect world um where people don't care about other people and and don't uh you know worry about other people but you know that's just what the u.s we've been so tied up in the stupidest crap and you know maybe we missed the boat maybe our elected officials have been either purposely distracted or um distracted just because they're focused on the wrong things you know what um i actually think the U.S. will be just fine. Um, I, I think I think the U.S. is actually, I, I think they're quietly poised nicely to adopt Bitcoin. This kind of gets into another whole tangent about Let's the it, um, yeah. the U.S. No, no, I can't. This is this will be a twenty minute tangent. But I think <laughs> I, I it's a, it's an article I'm going to actually uh, put out this week called the, the Bitcoin Milkshake Theory. Um, but essentially, I think the um, the US dollar is kind of, I think the US is backed into a corner. Um, like you have China, we're sitting on 20,000 tons of gold that they haven't declared to the world. You've got Russia sitting on a shit ton of gold and natural resources. I think the US has got diddly squat. 
their backs are against the corner. They've got a shit ton of debt. Um, and I think they're, they're kind of, they're kind of, um, their kind of Hail Mary will be to adopt Bitcoin much sooner than most people think. Um, and I think it kind of ties into something, ties back to something you said about the US and the petrodollar. The petrodollar was a good agreement. It, um, it prolonged the life of the US dollar and the global reserve currency for another 50 years. Like people forget the US defaulted on their debt in 1971. They said, you know what, we can't pay you. They saw there was a massive inflation uh, there's massive inflation rates all throughout the 1970s. People thought the dollar was going to die. But when they backed the US dollar with gold by making Saudi Arabia say, you know what, you need to price your oil in US dollars, I think, um, I think that was a massive move. And I think the US is going to do something very similar very soon with Bitcoin. Um, the same way their backs were against the corner in the 1970s and oil, and the petrodollar agreement saved the US dollar and their global reserve currency status, I think they're going to do the exact same thing with Bitcoin in maybe the next 24 months, maybe 36 months. I don't want to be too ambitious, but I, I think the US adopts it much sooner than most people think. Oh, man. I mean, from your lips to Biden's hair field fill to yours. Because... Um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I've never, I'm just assuming because That's he's gold. so old that he's got like <laughs> massive, like, you know, uh, Brillo pads of, of hair coming out of his ears. Like, it's just, I mean, a side note, like, I remember when the election, I was like, how in the world do we have these two old farts that like in no way can relate to the average person? How are that? How was, well, it's was that? Peak really? fear. It's yeah. peak fear. Like, you got to think we've been living on a fiat system or under central bank control for the past 400 years. We've been a, away from a gold standard for 50 years. The more you diverge yourself and society away from a gold standard, which is true natural laws, the further you go away from it, the more distorted society gets and the more, and the more hyperbolic clown world gets. It's just peak fiat. Everybody's peak unhealthy peak political divisiveness, right? We're in a fourth turning. We're at the end of an 80 year long-term debt cycle. There's all these cycles. We're at the very end of it. And I, it's um, seeing somebody like Biden and Trump, just two absolutely people, people who should not be running a country, battling it out and running a country. I think it's peak fiat and it's the furthest thing away from a meritocracy that you can see. I think Bitcoin's going to enable a meritocratic, a society where the people will be voting for potential presidents will actually be put up into positions like that based on meritocracy and based on the proof of work they do. Um, and I think um, just the fact that we we're at fiat's about to implode. What I meant by peak fiat is Biden, Trump, Trump they're like none of them have done. Any work. Like Trump, people say, oh, Trump's a businessman, he's an entrepreneur, crash. So uh, that's just what I meant. But it's wild. Yeah, no, it, is, it couldn't be more accurate. Uh, the peak fiat meaning, like, this is the peak, it's it's over. And, um, you know, I like even, like you said, like from like the health standpoint of you know i just can't get over like once, once you, you see it, it you can't unsee see it, it but like that yeah. picture of like a beach mm. in 1971 and like everybody's like fit and fine yeah. and then uh, not now mind you if you like run into me at bitcoin 2022 down in miami you're gonna be like what the hell is Corey talking about with being in shape that dude's like you know <laughs> look at that fat f you know, like walking around, blobbing his way around, flobbing no. into. Um, I I I, I, I pride myself on having a dad bod, um, but uh, the it's turned into a little bit of dad flob. Maybe I don't know. I'm trying to get the get that under control. I probably had too many seed oils, but I mean, it's just you know, it's something I'm. It's something I'm focused on with like. Um, just everything, you know, even like some like stupid stuff like sunscreen, you know, like uh, 
Like my, mm-hmm. I always tease my wife um, because so if anybody know, like if, I don't know if I've mentioned this too much, but it's like she's not a Bitcoiner in the sense that, like she doesn't care about economics at all. She's like it's the last thing in the world she wants to talk about. So as far as like the money goes, she's like she knows and trusts that I'll make the right decisions and I just, you know, go for it. And I'll like explain to her and she goes, OK, all right, that's enough. Like I, I understand it enough <laughs> that you're making the right decision. I don't want to talk about it anymore, but I was telling her today, I said, I wish like, I need to find a way to get her to be able to pay attention to different things in Bitcoin because there's, she's a Bitcoiner in every other sense, because for years she's been making us eat healthy junk and like put on like Mm -hmm. different types of sunscreen and all these different things. And I've always teased her and been like, you know, Oh, like, you know, this earthy crunchy, you know, like, you know, is this made from a plant? Like it has to be, you know, like this natural, you know, organic. I mean, you know, we've paid for organic milk for, for years. Um, so yeah, it was like probably a decade now that like, she's been making me so uber healthy and I'm like, I always tease her about it, but it's funny because I told her today, I said like, it's a very Bitcoin thing. Um, and like, I can't, yeah. I can't I say unsee people, that stuff. I, you know what? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say, I say to people all the time, like I say this to people openly, I say, you're a Bitcoin and you don't even know it yet. And people just laugh and they think I'm crazy. I was like, no, there's so many people out there who who focus on a healthy lifestyle, eat the right food, and they focus on their finances, like just the basics, like saving money, being frugal, having a low time preference. But they just haven't looked into Bitcoin yet. Like there's so many bitcoiners out there who just aren't bitcoiners um, yeah i don't want to go that, to the, yeah. yeah no i was just gonna say with the, like the seed oils that anyone on bitcoin twitter sees everybody's talking about seed oils all the time and so like i went to her to like tell her about the seed oils and she's like yeah i told you this years ago <laughs> i was like oh yeah um, it's not good for you like so she's like she's been aware of it for years she's like did you ever notice all the different oils we use they're not like i'm like oh yeah i totally was paying attention when you told me that like it's it's like it doesn't look good for me because she told me about it probably five or six years ago and i was like oh okay and then like and then like i come to her like six years later like it's a brand new idea because i heard about it from some nim on twitter Hey, you you might be six years later than your wife, but you're still you're still far earlier than ninety nine point nine nine percent of people shoveling the fiat food into their mouth. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But probably getting back onto uh, Bitcoin related events, um, I suppose. Did you see uh, the city of Rio in Brazil earlier this week, Corey, come out and say? Uh, yep, you know what? You can start paying your taxes in Bitcoin. I think they also use the dirty word crypto. Um, not 100% sure on that one, but it's good to see more Latin American countries um, adopting Bitcoin because I, they're the country that uh, maybe a couple of months ago put 1% of their treasury um, into Bitcoin. So this is good. Just more and more positive Bitcoin news coming out of Latin America where, where they need it. So well, did you see yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's funny. I I think I initially rolled my eyes at it because, you know, it was like another, you know, I mean, how many people come out and say like, Hey, you can pay for this in Bitcoin, you know? And it's like, Oh, I mean, Mm. you know, like wake me up whenever it's, you know, (laughs) like wake me whenever it's, you know, national or world uh, reserve currency, you know, like, like wait, wake me when it's legal tender, you know, or something like that. Um, But it is, it is different to, um, be accepting it in bitcoin because it it actually exposes you to it um like even so like i with like movies plus um like we we have bitcoin as our reserve and um and everything but we haven't we're working on implementing um you know like a bitcoin payments process and um it really honestly shouldn't be too hard it's just one of those things that like i've been focused like i get content is the biggest focus um so you know it hasn't been a priority but like and also in my mind i'm like we get the fiat and we just turn it into bitcoin so like what's the point of me accepting bitcoin and then whenever you look at it like i that's my mindset it's like i'm just going to turn around and buy bitcoin with it so it doesn't matter 
but then you turn around and you look at you know states or you know countries or or cities doing it where they're accepting the payments and all of a sudden they're they're directly they're no longer indirectly exposed to bitcoin they're directly exposed to it um mm. you know whether even if even if they're immediately turning into fiat which would be stupid on their part but if they're immediately turning into fiat there's a little bit of a spread there that they're going to see um hopefully mostly in the the up direction um and they're gonna be like you know what uh why don't we just uh why don't we why don't we slide five percent of this bitcoin in into the savings and let's just see what happens um mm. you know and and uh and so i think it's just going to keep happening and and it's going to continue with this this as this goes it's going to um more and more companies the more and more states the more and more people that get into it you know like that's what like this is not financial advice clubs we you know all of us plebs we just we work together we're not giving each other financial advice but like like i tweeted something or maybe i just thought it and i didn't tweet it actually i have no idea i'm i'm a parent so i'm exhausted um <laughs> sometimes Sorry. i think i do things and it doesn't actually come out but like if you are not a bitcoiner if you're not into bitcoin yet you you don't think you have enough exposure like just take a hundred dollars a month and buy Bitcoin, do that for a year. And I promise you, it will change your life. Not that it will be because you made so much money. It will change your life because you will see that. This, and I guarantee you for 90% of the people that, are do, that would do it, um, and it's their first purchase, by the end of the 12 months, they're not just putting $100 a month in. So, um, mm. you know. Exactly. You, Getting the toes wet makes you look into it more. I, I do the exact same thing with people. They ask me, oh, how much money do you have in a Bitcoin? I always say, um, I'm never going to tell you that. And then yeah. my second response is it's well over 95% of my net worth. And then, you know, their jaws drop. 95% of your money is in Bitcoin. Yes, it's in Bitcoin. But I'm telling you to just buy $100 or just buy $10 worth of Bitcoin off me. Because when you get the foot in the door or when you get their toes wet, they start looking into it. And we all know if you look into Bitcoin for more than an hour or two hours or three hours, you understand what it is, and that's what gets back to your point, Corey. That's the part that changes your life. When you actually start to look into Bitcoin and understand what it is and kind of um, implement uh, that into your own life, that's that's the, the game-changing part. Yeah. Not and the $100 I mean, a week. Exactly. And so, like, these cities, you know, like Rio de Janeiro taking it as um, for payment for taxes. I think Florida said they're going to start taking it for tax payments um so those little things that's the equivalent of you know us telling individual people you know buy a hundred dollars of it and and then you know see how it goes you know you start to get your feet wet that's the on a much larger scale that's what that's hap uh, is happening so you know i think it's it's all up and to the right you know news um and uh and it's just going to keep keep us going in that direction um and uh yeah that's a, a and then what about so saudi saudi arabia they're no longer pricing not to jump subjects real quick if you had thoughts on rio uh no rio rio is good um we did kind of forget about saudi arabia and china we'll talk about the petrodollar a lot at the start of the episode sorry to do a bit of circle on you guys plebs but yeah so saudi's um, obviously, that's how the petrodollar agreement was set up. The US went to the Saudis and they said, you guys, you guys and the OPEC nations, price your oil in US dollars. That was the petrodollar agreement for the past 50 years. Um, that's what the Zoltan Polzar calls Bretton Woods 2, the Bretton Woods 2 era of fiat-backed money. And then obviously the Saudis come out this week and they said, you know what, fuck this petrodollar agreement. Um, I think they signed a deal with China and they said, you know what, you can actually send us your Chinese yuan for oil and we're going to take it. Um, so that was that was something we were going to discuss. And I think it's very, very massive and just another signpost of the petrodollar agreement breaking down. If you've got two global superpowers like Russia and China exiting US dollars, that they're certainly just only going to accelerate the timeline. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, 
the U.S. So it's I think, like you said earlier, the U.S. is backed into a corner. And I think this is something that really puts them because basically what's going on in Saudi Arabia, we've turned a blind eye to it. You know, um, I'm assuming it. most of you plebs uh, know, like we do, that there's a war in Yemen that's been going on for a while. Um, so, you know, it's not just I stand with Ukraine. Um, how about this? I just stand with innocent people. That's what that's who I stand with. Um, and uh, and that's, you know, most of the people. Um, and uh, but, yeah, we've turned a blind eye to a lot of the things going on over there. And all of a sudden they were just like, you know what? You guys are ruining this dollar system. We're getting out um, either that or maybe they're using it as a chip. Do you think they're using it as just like a, a posturing to to try and get the U.S. to like whip into shape and get their dollars stronger? Well, there's a few different reasons. Um, I pull up some notes here on why Saudi Arabia uh, decided to ditch the dollar um, now, why after 50 years they decided to do this. Um, well, the Saudis didn't like the U.S. withdrawing from Afghanistan last year because uh, obviously the U.S. is su- supposed to provide military protection to the Middle East um, and have bases set up there and not just bail like Biden did and hand Afghanistan the largest military in the world. Um, so that's one reason why Saudi's been kind of pissed. Um, another reason why Saudi's been pissed with the U.S. is because the U.S. has now been trying to make a deal with Iran recently. Um, so when Russia decided to sanction, the, uh, when Russia got sanctioned, the U.S. has been scrambling. So I think um, somebody from the U.S. went and flew to uh, Venezuela to try and sort some sort of oil agreement out, and they did the same thing with Iran, which is Iran's a country that Saudi Arabia is obviously at odds with. So there's two reasons why uh, the Saudis have been pissed off with the U.S. recently, and like uh, the economies have kind of changed. So the U.S. used to import 2 million barrels of oil a day from Saudi Arabia, and now they only import 500,000 barrels a day. Um, so 75% less, uh, 2 million barrels of oil a day from Saudi Arabia. Now the U S only imports half a million barrels, 500,000. And is that Um, because the U S has diversified who they're getting it from? So, uh, U S has actually become more energy independent. Um, so the fracking revolution, even though we've gone backwards on that and started to become less energy independent over the last handful of years, right? That's right. So we've become slightly less energy independent over the past two or three years, especially since Biden um, has been attempting to shut down fracking and um, new oil lease permits. Um, He's been shutting all of those down and offshore drilling and the Keystone pipeline. Biden shut that down as well as soon as he got into office. Um, But despite all of that, um, America is still more energy independent than they were 20 or 30 years ago. Um, and that's because, like, before the fracking revolution took off um, in around the 2010 timeline, the U.S. was really, really dependent on energy, like, really badly, uh, I think. But now we're kind of one of the larger producers around the world, even with Biden um, kneecapping ourselves and shooting ourselves in the foot um, in terms of energy. It's still a lot better than where we were. So we import less oil than we did, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 years ago from the Saudis. So we've basically been, I mean, us getting energy independent, which is a good thing, um, is definitely upsetting to them. Um, But... uh, Well, just economically. Yeah. Just think about it, like, economically. We used to pay them for 2 million barrels of oil a day. Now we only pay them for 500,000. And China accounts for 25% of Saudi's oil exports now so there's there's all of these things um not just economically but also politically in terms of um iran and afghanistan the saudis have just said enough's enough we've had it we're out um so that's just another massive signpost that the petrodollar agreements um continuing to break down and we're going to be living under a new kind of monetary order in the not too distant future it's crazy man it's absolutely crazy what's going on. Well, um, 
I said the quote last week. Um, we're living in those times where just everything's happening. So, like, there's decades where nothing happens, and then there's days and weeks where decades happen. And we're living in we're living in those weeks at the moment where decades of events are unfolding. It's it's fucking fascinating to watch it all um, unfold. I I love every minute of every day following it all. Yeah, I mean, it's like the saying, what a time to be alive. Um, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily the best time to be alive. It's just like, holy <laughs> crap, you know, like there is some yeah. major things going down. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, well, and then I guess, you know, to round out um, the topics, uh, unless you have more on that, if you want to move on to the stable coin. I think we've just about smashed everything, um, apart from probably the the biggest, probably the biggest news of the week. I suppose is the stable quan. I like how you, you said that in the introduction, and it caught me. Stable coin, stable quan. Um, for those of you listening and don't know what's going on, um, the founder of a shit coin, Do Quan. Not Do Coin, Do Quan. He's come out recently and said, "You know what? I'm buying ten billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. I'm going to back up my shit coin. Um, he has a stable coin. Um, he's going to essentially back that with Bitcoin. Um, so that's the news that Corey's referring to. Oh, we got an alarm. I better turn that up. That's uh, probably Luke's bedtime alarm. <laughs> yeah, it probably is." It's I'm incredible. an old man. Corey, t- Corey takes the piss out of me because I go to bed so early. But um, I go to bed at like eight o'clock at night. It's so funny. It's too late for me, dude. I can't even talk. My, um, my kids go to bed too- like later than you. <laughs> <laughs> or not hey, later, I'm but, young. You know. I'm young. I'm a I young spring you, chicken. You, yeah, you did call me your Bitcoin dad at one point, which still makes me feel old and <laughs> dirt. Um, <laughs> I but, did. Uh, I did. But so, all right, yes. so, st- so Do Kwan, he is the creator of the shitcoin Luna. Luna. And he, yeah, and so he, he has a shitcoin called. Yeah, he has a shitcoin called Luna. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. So he has a shitcoin called Luna. And that has a price. It goes up and down in price. It's, for example, the price of Luna is like 90 US shitcoins. Okay. So that goes up and down in price. People can speculate on the shitcoin Luna. But then there's also an associated stable coin. It's supposed to be an algorithmic stable coin called uh, UST. So it's the T stands for Terra. So US dollar stable coin, T for Terra. So if you look on the exchange books, uh, UST is the stable coin. It's supposed to be like an algorithmic, algorithmically backed stable coin. I don't know the the exact details of how that works, but he's essentially buying ten billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, and he's backing that stable coin uh, with it. Where did he get the ten billion dollars? Oh, I'll tell you. I reckon it goes something like this. So, any shitcoin is listening in, probably put some blue tack in your ears because you're not going to like what I'm about to tell you. But all of these shitcoin creators. They give themselves like 80% of the tokens when they initially launch it, called a pre-mine. And when they get the, they only release 20% of the tokens out to the everyday public that you can buy on exchanges. And when the price of that goes up, um, the founder who holds 80% of the tokens just slowly sells it. So the dude's obviously a multi, multi multi-billionaire at the moment. Um, And I'm assuming he's selling some of that uh, pre-mine to fund further development of the shitcoin because it's gone up a lot in price the 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 lunar the lunar aspect of his project and the one that's 90 dollars has gone from like a dollar to 90 in the past 24 months when did he release it was it 24 months ago or was it longer than that has it been around not sure um no not not entirely sure so you think he has 10 billion dollars of his own money to buy it I mean, I really, didn't look into it that deep. yeah, but like, really, it is the lesson for everyone. You know, if you're a shit coiner, like their goal is to rem- get more Bitcoin by basically by stealing, by 
not stealing, but um, I guess selling you on some crap product that they know is going to f- doom to fail. Um, and, uh, you know, so they're, they're selling you the, the pipe dream that your money is going to go to the moon with their shit coin. And they're really, their main plan is to just turn it around, buy Bitcoin with it, which actually is kind of funny. It was like Bitcoiners have been talking about that for a while and, and, um, you know, for a long time. And, uh, and it's actually just, that's what's happening. So like, I'm, what I'm taking away from is he's just literally <laughs> saying like, I'm taking the money that I got from Luna and buying $10 billion worth of Bitcoin because it's the most yes. sound, fundamental, like solid inflation resistant, yada, yada, yada. And that's going to be what is backing my UST. Exactly. And that's the excuse. The, the truth and the reality of what's going on is uh, the altcoiners made him a billionaire by buying his shitcoin Luna. And now he says, you know what? I'm rug pulling this. I don't like this Luna thing. It's a piece of shit. But but I'm going to buy Bitcoin with it. That's what every shitcoin founder um, has in mind when they create a shitcoin. I'm going to dump this later when it's worth more. I'm going to buy Bitcoin with it. Except he just uses the excuse, oh, no, 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 but I'm... I'm creating this algorithmic stable coin over here that's backed by Bitcoin. That's why I'm buying the Bitcoin. Um, it's not because I don't believe in Luna. It's because it's all part of my plan. Um, so, yeah, but it's hilarious. This is an actual rug pull. In I mean, why live, wouldn't he buy we, more we Luna? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't he be buying exactly. more Luna? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If, if, it's, if it's so good, um, just buy more of it. I don't know a lot of Bitcoiners that... Um, that sell their Bitcoin to buy other, no smart ones at least, sell their Bitcoin to, um, you know, buy some new up and coming thing. But it's funny to watch the the reverse of that happen and nobody really understand what's, what's, you know, actually happening. Um, so that, so, okay. So that's what that situation is. Cause I, as I'm sure a lot of you out there experience the same as me, like all of a sudden Bitcoin Twitter just, becomes filled with this like narrative of something and you're like what the hell is going on like that's like i was just like i all of a sudden i saw people talking about this you know ust and it was gonna buy 10 million dollars 10 billion dollars worth of bitcoin they're like what in the world is going on i have no idea what this is um i mean i I don't have the time to look into the fundamentals of shit coins but the amount is massive like Sailor is known as the Giga Chad, right? He only has like three or four billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. This dude's coming out and buying ten. He's got triple the amount of coin as Sailor. That's massive. Like it's big news. Although there, I see a lot of people saying that it, you know, could be like a scam, like a tether, you know, backed by nothing. Um, uh, you know, is this is this real? Um, because some people made a good point. They were like, why would you come out and announce your purchase and let everybody front run you? <laughs> you know, like. Mm. And well, obviously, I it's. I don't know this dude. I never met him, never even heard him talk. So I, you know, I can't pass judgment on on what I think he's thinking, but. I, I wouldn't if I if I had ten billion dollars right now to buy Bitcoin, I sure as hell would not be telling anybody, probably ever, but I would not be telling anybody until way after the fact. Um, if I was going to tell people, be like, hey, remember whenever Bitcoin was down in the thirties? Yeah, I bought ten billion dollars worth. That was your mistake. Mm. Um, it's also hard to buy ten billion dollars of Bitcoin and not move the price. Um, obviously, we don't talk about price a whole lot on this channel, especially short-term price predictions and magic tea leaf kind of stuff like that. But price of Bitcoin's gone from under forty k to like forty six or forty seven k. It was earlier today. So um, is somebody's front up. running him. Um, yeah, it's right now. It's at like almost forty seven, like forty six nine something. It was at forty seven. I mean, it's literally as we're talking, going like up and down above and below 47 so um yeah it's 
something's going on and it's it's not getting so not to get too much into the price action um but it's not getting swatted down like it has been you know where like you'll see a surge and everybody goes yeah here we go and then it just gets swatted down again and then everybody's like you know okay something's going on um you know there's there's some kind of so I don't know. I mean, you're you're probably more adept to understanding and looking at volume and everything. I mean, what what do you think is going on? Because we've had let's look at look at the daily. Yeah, like in terms of in terms of price, I've been screaming it from the rooftops for the past month. People have been calling for an eighty five percent correction in a bear market. I've been absolutely squealing like a little girl. I keep saying. No, 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 it's not going to happen. Look at the on-chain fundamentals. The people who are buying Bitcoin are long-term holders. You're currently watching like the largest supply squeeze in Bitcoin's history. Like I don't think the illiquid supply has been as high as it has today. And you've never actually seen long-term holders acting like they are now um, if we're only halfway through a bear market. So I think I've been squeal on that. Coins have been flying off exchanges. So that's the supply side of the Bitcoin equation. There's no supply, but we just haven't really quite had the big demand. Um, and the only reason we've been correcting over the past couple of months from 69 to 33 has been the correlation with the equities. And But the whole time during that correlation, coins have continued to be scooped up and bought by these long-term holders. And now as soon as you see a little bit of demand come into the market with this Do Quam guy, you can see what it does to the price. Price is going from like what thirty seven k to forty seven k in a week, um, so I, so that's I suppose what's going on with the price. If you want to get have a little bit of a look under the hood, but yeah, it's just I mean yeah, it's been and, a, a ten thousand dollar jump in a week, hasn't it? Yeah, and equities have stabilized as well. So the S and P five hundred has stabilized, um, which is obviously. Uh, it's obviously helpful for Bitcoin because people still don't understand what they're trading. All of these algorithms and these hedge fund bros, they're still trading Bitcoin as a risk on asset. Um, so when equities were selling off, Bitcoin was selling off. But now that equities have stabilized, Bitcoin's uh, been enabled to do its thing. Yeah. Hmm. And it's... So, so because equities are now t- not tanking anymore, it can, I mean, is that what people talk about whenever they talk about the decoupling? Yeah. Like exactly. When I, I think we're going to say that. Do you think that means that it won't, we won't need equities that does that, is that what the de- decoupling is? We don't need equities to be stabilized in order for Bitcoin to go up. Yeah, eventually, so the, I, the way I think of the decoupling is different. Everybody's memeing about it when Bitcoin does something different to stocks over 12 hours and they say, oh, decoupling, bro. I see it differently. I see it as um, the decoupling event occurs when equities are down 50% and Bitcoin's rallying. Um, and I think, that, I think that happens. I honestly do think that happens in the next four to five years. Um, I think a sell-off occurs in equities and over the past 50 to 100 years, let's, just, let's talk macro for a minute. We don't want to lose people. But essentially, you've got two assets. You've got risky assets like stocks and you've got safe assets, quote unquote safe, like bonds. Bonds have been seen as a traditionally safe asset. So every single time that equities have been crashing, the money runs to cash and the money runs to bonds. So every single sell-off, the 1987 stock market sell-off, the 2000 tech bubble sell-off, the 2008 housing market sell-off, what's happened in each of those events? Equities have crashed and sold off. The money has ran to the dollar, so cash, as well as US treasuries. The treasury has been the safe haven asset for the world for the past 50 years since we've been operating on the Bretton Woods II petrodollar agreement, right? People have stored their savings in US dollars or US treasuries. Now, the decoupling event happens when equities are selling off and nobody runs the U.S. treasuries anymore because they understand the U.S. is going to default on that debt in the future and they don't want to hold a treasury that's 
uh, yielding 2% interest rates when inflation's at 10%. So they understand that the treasury is broken and they buy Bitcoin as their safe haven asset. So that's my idea of the decoupling. And I think it happens in the not too distant future. Equities will crash and Bitcoin will rally. That will be, I think, rip off. This is my smooth brain opinion. That will be your rip off your face, like yeah. the price movement, where it's like, yeah. hold on, as uh, you know, Samuel L. Jackson said in Jurassic Park, hold on to your butts. You know, that's the, <laughs> yeah. that's the hold on this, to your this, butts moment. This is this is when Bitcoin gets monetized. I, I literally wrote like an eight thousand word article that got published in Bitcoin Magazine. Essentially talking about this and how Bitcoin gets monetized. So if you guys want to hear my full rant about it, you can go check out that article. It's pinned to my Twitter profile. But I, I believe this is how Bitcoin gets monetized. And overnight, well, I think in the space of a week or maybe the space of a month, Bitcoin will go from $50,000 to $5 million a coin over the course of a really short time period. And it's going to melt faces. And it's all going to be because the bond market melts down. Yeah, the bond market is, it's inevitably going to fall apart. Um, yeah. And uh, it's interesting. Well, um, I think that pretty much covers everything. And we got to let Luke go, uh, you know, curl up in bed and, uh, and you know, get a couple of nighttime stories, um, you know, like Berenstein <laughs> Bears, like if you're into those, or, um, <laughs> you know, I can bring whatever, whatever stories you need for Miami, I can bring those down and I can, you know, I can read you some <laughs> kids' books. Uh, do it you you bring your array of books and uh plebs if you're in miami come say hello Corey and i are both going to be in miami uh, we're gonna be in a bunk to bed together <laughs> 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 it's funny I'm joking either. Uh, no, we shit. we did and we we booked it and then we looked at it afterwards and we're like oh shit this this is a bunk bed um so luke and i will be sleeping in a bunk bed like uh like stepbrothers to bring it full circle uh it'll be like uh will ferrell and john c Riley. um you know and, i'm the uh, child so does that mean i'll get thrown in the top bunk dad's yeah. in the bottom okay. yeah Damn. yeah and then you and then you can jump on it and it'll crash onto me and you know um all right plebs we will catch you guys next week and uh, appreciate it and just uh yeah Stay humble, stack sets. Matt, the great Matt O'Dell said it best. Just stack sets, stay humble, and uh, keep on keeping on. See you guys.